Right, here we are. All right. Um, oh, we start here. Oh, we already started. Yeah, we started. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Right, Waiting cool. for you. All right, cool. Uh, welcome back to whatever this has turned into. <laughs> CS. E C S, I guess. We're talking C S. We're recapping all the cool things. Um I thought it was pretty interesting. C S for twenty twenty. Right. And uh, you know, what do you think about it? We'll a lot dive of dive into the specifics. Well, I mean a lot of cool tech. Um this year has definitely been innovation heavy onto the future. Not so much as like it's always now it's like we're trying to take leaps and bounds again with stuff before it was just incremental like updates now like we want to do a leap and bound with new technology for either the home or for work or whatever you have and it's cool because you know during those major leaps and bounds is when like technology really takes a you know a good hard lead into the future so not these things might not pan out but the things that come after this or come out from like this tinkering might be what the future is based on, so I'm excited. So maybe some of the stuff will help us get to the Jetsons' future. Yes, prompts. exactly. That's what I was <laughs> trying to say. Yes. Uh, where do you want to start? We don't have to do it in order. Have- uh, let's start with what everybody usually goes to see CES for. That's the TVs. Okay. So let's start with TVs. Um, I I've always been a fan of LG. LG LG has always had a. For me, they've always had one of the best TVs. I mean. You know, all, all joking aside, Sony makes amazing TVs, but Sony TVs are not for everybody because those, those price well, tags are pretty. Price. Yeah, mainly because of the price. The <laughs> prices for for Sony TVs are, um, it's like the ball range. Like yeah. I don't think they make entry level, um, welcome to 4K TVs. Yeah. It's all ball range. So for everybody else who's not there yet, um, LG has always had a good lineup and I am a true believer in the technology. Their, their TVs always look amazing. They make panels for everybody else too for a lot of companies they don't know. Yep. LG makes the majority of panels just like Sony makes a lot of sensors for other camera brands. LG makes most of the v- panels for um, everybody else. So yeah. they know what they're doing. Yeah. So uh, this year it, LG is beefing up their 8K lineup. 8K. Uh, TVs. That's yeah. So, um, I think that's across the board. A lot of companies are doing the AK thing. Yeah, yeah. That's so you got um, Sony's doing it. Samsung and LG are the ones coming out with this year with their uh, their AK lineup. Yeah, um, I think LG this year instead of just doing like big, they did all across the board to kind of cater to different price points right. in regards to going AK. Not a lot of. Not a lot. I don't know if there's any AK content. Maybe like a handful of things. Honestly. Th- the 8K content, if there is any, isn't really here in the U.S. Um, Japan has a 8K channel oh. that streams 8K channel, but only for like a certain periods of the day. Oh. Um, and then the rest of the period goes back down to God forbid 4K, because um, Japan, as you know, they stream mostly in 4K now. Like they're phasing out full HD, We're and so here behind. in the U.S. <laughs> We're barely on half of the cable channels are still 720, so not even full HD. So like we're lagging behind. So and then again, 8K. Like we were talking about this earlier. Like it's it's a distance to ratio of the size of the TV. Yeah. So to get a full value of an 8K TV, you can't go under 55 inch. You probably shouldn't be even going under 65 inch yeah. to get the full value of an 8K. But then you have to have the room. But then you have to have the room for it because if not, and you you have a small room and you have an 8K TV, the 65 inch or the 75 inches. You're looking at pixels. You're looking at pixels, and then you're gonna be like, "This looks like crap." It's because it wasn't intended to be. You know, the IMAX looks great, but if you ever been to an IMAX either, the front front little portion of rows. Yep. Nobody hits like sitting there for two reasons. One, your neck hurts. Yeah. And two, it doesn't look as good. Yeah, it like when shit. you take a couple like thirty feet back, yeah. you sit there, you're like, Oh, this this is worth it. Same thing at home. So like eight K is great, but you need to also have the accommodations for eight K. So yeah. I think four K right now is what everybody's going into. And like yeah. they have a like like I said, there's a lot of lineups of four K. As we're talking about T V, Vizio's releasing their O L E D four K this year. Yep. You know, um, Vizio is like a, a brand if you want to get like good quality, you know, definitely out there. Don't knock out TCL because they've been Amazon's best 4K TV brand for like the past five, six years. Yeah, I sense trying to creep up. Yeah. yeah so there's some, 
And TCL stuff. has like that micro LED technology. Which, yeah, I think TCL is, TCL is pretty much a new Vizio. Yeah, uh, yeah. In regards to um, quality and value for a TV. Correct, and, but you can only they're they're mostly Amazon's uh, online people. But hey, who you, don't shop it? And every, almost everybody shops. Uh, everybody Amazon, shops in so Amazon, so exactly. W for everybody. So like, there's a lot of that. They uh, LG is finally releasing their roll up TV. Yes. And then they have a new model that's coming out, but instead of rolling up, you hang it from your ceiling and it rolls down. Like a like a shade. Like, like a, a shade. Like a, like and it's you know, shade. or basically, if you have a projector at home, you know how your sometimes your 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 wall, you either paint on the wall, you put a little like comes down. Comes yeah. down. Well, this is gonna be the actual LED TV coming down for your ceiling. So that should be exciting if that's the kind of theater antics or baller stuff you want to do. Um. But, I mean, yeah, TVs are exciting. I'm actually going to get a 4K. So, I'm definitely looking at the LG ones, especially the Nano Series. Even though the Nano Series is technically LCD panels, yeah, um, the way they do it, it, it's actually coming close to LEDs. So, it'll, you, the, the look is great. And like, So, I'm probably going to go out with LG and then maybe get a second one, um, a TCL just to compare and see how far they are. I mean, why not? Right, TCL right. is like great. You could probably get a couple of TCLs and before you can get a Sony. So yeah, why not? So yeah, TVs are exciting. What else? What you got? Uh, let's see. Where we gonna go? Uh, yeah, we talked about Samsung. Let's stay on Samsung. All right. So uh, they dropped a couple of things. Some mm-hmm. were like really cool. Some were like interesting. Some were surprising. Some was like, oh, look at that. So. To kick things off, they announced this actually before uh, CS officially started. Uh, the, the Galaxy S10 Lite and the Note 10 Lite. Right. So both of these are supposedly in between budget models, which is interesting yet confusing because Samsung yeah. has their A line, which is supposed to be their like premium budget kind of thing. So it's like, all right, there's, there's too much going on now. <laughs> so they're trying to be like they're trying to put like a Google Pixel kind of a thing. <sighs> I don't know. See, I, that's I'm not, I'm that's not sure anything. Though. Because yeah. that's Samsung's routine. Uh, Samsung's mo has been just throwing things at the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. So now they're just kind of cranking out devices, where it's like, all right, well, what does this fit in? I wonder if it did trying to because people people forget that uh, not Samsung, but Apple's had that low, medium, and high price com- like releases for the past three years. Yep. Ever since they had the R, that was their low budget. Or even well, before the R, when they had the like uh, the C, the color joints, yeah. that, that was the low budget. Yep. You know, the standard iPhone, not the Maxes or the Pros, were like the standard. You know, and then the Max and the Pros were the premium. So like, I'm feeling maybe they're trying. They want to do the same thing where they have a low, premium, and that middle where the majority of people might fit in. But the thing is, they already have the Galaxy 10 SE. Mm. So it's like I'm confused. <laughs> now, is, do you think these are? Are these some some of these are not coming to uh, this market, right? They're just staying in. Uh, I think th- no, I think they are. All, all They're coming. Oh. Both of them are coming, but um, I don't think they announced pricing. But okay. we do have um, some interesting things because, like the t- the Note Ten Lite is it is what it is a Note Ten Lite. Right. So it also adds more confusion because you have the Note Ten and Note Ten Plus. So it's like oh, too many now, too many. Right. Meanwhile, the S10 Lite is actually more interesting of the two because it, it looks like it has some of those uh, design features coming to the Galaxy S11. Or I'm sorry, the S20, as they're calling it. They're not doing 11? Huh? They're not. They're going straight to 20? They're skipping, yeah. I mean, Apple skipped from 8 to 9, or 9 to <laughs> 8 skipped, to 10, nine. whatever. They skipped, they skipped, yeah, Apple skipped one phone, the Apple well, they skipped, iPhone Technically, 9. they skipped two. They went from the first generation to three. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. So they're skipping two. So but they stuck on three for a while. Three, three, yeah, G, three GS. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess that that made up for but, it. But um, yeah. But the ten light is gonna have like a let me see, forty eight megapixels uh standard lens. Let me see if I'm reading it right. Going off memory, lack of sleep. Yeah, I was gonna say how much how much difference are they all gonna be if they're gonna be around like? Well, um, between those two phones, they're kind of like they're pretty much identical, mm. say for the S Pen and. The cameras. The cameras, right, the, right. The, 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 no S, the, the S10 Lite actually has the more interesting lineup, but it depends on what you need. So yeah. let me, I have it pulled up. Let me see. So the S10 Lite has 
Um, yeah, 48 megapixel wide as main shooter, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 5 megapixel macro. So, yeah. Versus the Note 10 Lite, which it's is just uh, one, right? all 12 megapixels, ultra wide, wide, and telephoto. So, it's okay. like. Yeah. I mean, like, I, if, if, if the real differences are just in the camera, then why just, why make you, why even make it another know. phone? Because like, the, the battery is the same, the RAM is the same, the screen size is the same. Screen, everything else is the same, but the only <laughs> distinction is the cameras and the lenses. Well, the ca- they actually do look different. Like the camera oh, yeah, setup yeah, is style, different yeah. on the rear, mm-hmm. but from the front, you can't tell the difference. Oh. I don't know. I, I think now they're just grasping a, sp- a straw. It's, it's come to the point where like all the phone companies are just yeah. trying to squeeze out as much out of Because, again, we've been talking about this for dec- not decades, but for like yeah. years, two or three years now. We're yeah. hitting that wall. Yeah. Like, you, can, you can't put anything else in. And you know that's that's it. You're hitting that wall. You can't. What else are you gonna put into a phone that the previous three or four generations haven't been good at? Like you add another lens, like that's, that's, you know, like this. I mean, I, I yeah, I got it because it has three lenses. And yeah, actually, that they took, they it's just a big an improvement, though. Yeah, it took them a year to do this. Meanwhile, the improvement is huge for iPhone users. But then, like again, Samsung's had it for a while. Google's had it for a while. Yeah. So like, what but else are you gonna add? It, like. It's weird with Samsung because, like, all right, yeah, I went from dropping one phone a year, now you dropped two phones a year. Three now. Now it's three. So it's like, and, and they're ascent- all three of them, if this is going to be moving forward, right. all three of them going to be essentially the same phone. And then you got to understand, or, like, it's it's a, it's the market, like, you know, the demands. Are the demands there for, for a, a series of four different phones? When we've gotten to a point where if you got a phone in the last two years, that phone, if it doesn't break, crack, or anything else, could last you five years because the speed's there, the technology's there. It's going to take the next firmware update you give it, the lenses are, the yeah. cameras. Like, what exactly are you trying to, like, to do? Like, I don't know. To get people in between, in between phones. I'm like, people don't upgrade like that. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Like I said, they would have, uh, you were. This would have been a killing back when phones were $200. Exactly, $200. Yeah. exactly. Now you're in the range of phones being a car payment more or like a luxury car payment or yeah. your rent, you know, if you live like in a studio apartment and stuff like that, like that's ridiculous that this is what it's come to. So people aren't going to be upgrading as much, especially if the offering is a oh, newer lens, which you don't even use in your three lenses. Like I know I got this and I, and I use it a lot, like the different lenses, but I know people who've, who've had the pro use all three lenses like the first day and have yet to use them ever again. They, just stick on that one. I dabble with the ultra wide telephoto. I don't even bother. Right. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think they're just, they're just grasping the straws. I think everybody's going to start doing this. They're going to start coming out with extra models just to try to get the market back. But they're honestly, be on the monkey see monkey do. Yeah. Shit. But right now we're at, we're at the market where unless you do a complete Obuha and like if, uh, when the iPhone first came out, it was in the generation where like everything was either a flip phone or a keyboard phone. Yeah. Or that. So, the next winner is going to be whoever comes out with the next phone that is not just touchscreen, like the evolution of a touchscreen, whatever that next thing is. Um, and I know this is going back to to the other Samsung product, the Fold. Everybody believes the Fold is the future. Um, you don't believe that? I don't. Like we we got away from the Fold because of the click and the clacking and like the closing and the breaking and the hinges for a reason. Like we yep. got away from that for a reason. Um, to go back to it, yes, you might go back to it for nostalgic purposes, but at the same time, like who who would want to go back to stuff like that? Like I don't know. I don't think I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be something that people are gonna be worried. And then you know, the, the folding phones are like three times the size, twice the size of the, your regular phone. Like like the space is gonna become an issue. Like I don't know, it, it becomes more of a burden after a while when you're carrying something like that. Yeah. It yep. They will figure it out or burn themselves out. Burn themselves. <laughs> um, but they also did, what else? What else they released? The Odyssey G9 Curved QLED 49-inch game monitor. That thing looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. But here's my thing. It's game. Uh, well, it's a gaming book. No, no. But, yeah, no, no. It, and it probably is a gaming monitor. But yeah, curves were a thing, I think, for a very brief moment because it didn't actually improve anything. Yeah, it didn't. Right? Yeah, it didn't happen. Fetch, and then, fetch it didn't happen. And then it goes, and it goes back to the whole thing. Like they wanted to do a curve because a lot, some big IMAX theaters have curved screens. But then again, that's because they have the space for it. 
sitting yeah. in front of it, like this is what a, a, a laptop or desktop computer stand. Here's the monitor. Yeah. You're right here. There's. <laughs> If I have to, if I have to keep keep turning my head like this, I do that anyways. But that's because I have two monitors. Yeah. So I I understand. But if I have to do that for one monitor, it's, it's gonna be like, you know, like people say, yeah, you can move your, you can just move your eyes. No, that's not how your body, your body wants yeah, to be right. centered. All if the you're time. gaming, you ain't moving your eyes. Yeah, you. Sure yeah, you exactly. So I don't know. I mean, it looks beautiful, it but does. they could have done the same thing in flat, and it would have been fine, probably. Yeah, I, don't know. I think uh, some people swear by the curve that it makes a huge difference. I I've never actually seen that to be true, and I've used a couple curved uh, monitors, and I wasn't. If they really didn't up the game or the experience anymore because it was curved. Because remember, one time TVs were trying to like Samsung had a Samsung? whole bunch of TVs same that were company, curved. Yeah, they try and to make curve. They still make curved stuff. Uh, stuff, yeah, but not, not TVs. Not as much, of course. No, yeah, especially I don't think they released any new curved. No, TVs. they still do. They do like oh. the budget. I think uh, like the smaller regular game of monitors or, or, or curved. Oh, yeah, monitors, yeah, but and, I'm like uh, actual TV. Some TV, some, TV there are, yeah. There's some 4K curved TV. They may not have dropped them like last year or two, but there's still some on Amazon. You'll find a good price. Yeah, I mean, if that's the thing, you have the space for it, yeah, but I mean, it looks good. Like it's gamers will be loving it. Like the oh, colors yeah. are great, refresh rates are amazing. Yeah, 240 hertz. Yeah. They didn't announce pricing, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be like a couple grand. 14, 15. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. 13, but it's going to be over 1,000 easy. And they also did release what? The, the Chromebook, right? Samsung? The Chromebook? Galaxy Chromebook. The Galaxy so Chromebook. It looks right. amazing. It's this lovely red. It's pretty much Samsung. It's Google panning the baton for making premium Chromebooks from themselves to give it to Samsung. I mean, it looks good, but it's a Chrome. It's a it's, it's a, a Chromebook. Then. Chromebook that kind of do, it's a, it's an oxymoron itself. It's like Chromebooks are made for it's a Chrome. You know, not budget, but just made for just easier access, affordable access yeah. to go and get online and just. And, do and, online and the stuff. the big thing that I mean, people use Chromebooks and they sell decently. Not really not at what they were expecting, but it's because Chrome as an interface is. Well, they do well in the educational market. Well, yeah, it's because they're also giving them a huge discount and saying, hey, you know, we'll sell these at like a third of the cost as they should give us those but contracts. Outside of that Galaxy Chromebook, regular Chromebooks, like you might ball out at 500. Yeah. Yeah. You can get it on for like two, three, something like like the kids, like kids that go to like tech in high school, like they have Chromebooks. But that's because that's what they're being given. No, no, had, yeah, they're giving had, Chromebooks, had, and, 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 like, the whole system is set up on it. Like perfect, yeah, perfect example, like, you know, the biggest controversies on, on between people who use technology devices, it's always going to be, like, either Apple or Windows, right? Mm -hmm. Or Samsung or iPhones or even Google, right? Yep. But the, the argument will never be, uh, is it going to be Samsung, Google? I mean, it's going to be, like, uh, Windows, Apple, <sighs> or Chrome. That's uh, never yeah. gonna be a thing. I think there's more competition. For people say, "Would well, do you want Windows, Apple, or Linux before you go to Chrome?" Oh yeah, most definitely. But so, I think the I think the thing that Chrome did was that they kind of usurped uh, Microsoft's out there education market. That's why they came out with uh, what's that ten Windows ten X or whatever. Yeah, kind of like their version of Chrome that still didn't do well. <laughs> and again, it's it's I think it's a Chrome experience. It's a niche thing. It's, it's yeah, super niche. yeah. I I I buy by I'm a I'm a big Chromebook advocate because I think it's just it's simple enough. If most people don't need stuff to go online, yeah, and it's exactly like you're right. You go online, you can do everything with that. If your if your life doesn't revolve about being online, and you, but you need access to online, yeah. and you need something gamer, simple, creation, definitely, creator, yeah. Right. Yeah, if you're just, uh, I don't want to say normal, but if you're just an American who... Regular consumer. Who, yeah, who really doesn't want to spend that much time online, if not through the device. And yeah, you need, I mean, well, like, yeah that makes screen. sense, and that totally makes sense. Get your two-on-one, flip it over, watch Netflix on, on the right. couch, like, you can do something, you know, without spending... Get one flip, but, and get it goes back to my point, though, do... Does that warrant a premium version? Though? No, it's just it's just there, just cause. Just cause, yeah. Again, they grasp me the straws, the straws here, cause. Yeah, it, but again, I would say it's it, it's Samsung, but it is this time. But Google did it first. There you go. There you go. I love my Pixel Book, by the way. 
But yeah. um, what else we got? Samsung. I think. Oh, the balling robot. Yeah, you mentioned that to me, and I and I, had, I, and I got the few you minutes spend, to take a look you at spend it. Thirty seconds on that. Yeah, uh, like we said it off camera, when we were discussing it. It's like a, a modern day Tamagotchi, except there's no screen. It just it just follows you around. Yeah, it's BB-8, but useless. Useless. It's kind of like Siri on the iPhone. It's just yeah. useless. Or Bixby. Oh, Bixby on the Samsung. <laughs> it's useless. Go down. Um, that's the thing. So I mean, that's it. It's it's interesting theory. I do like that Samsung is is despite throwing trying. a thousand things at the wall, they are showing that they're capable of more than just your standard consumer electronics. Yeah. Will it take off? Who knows? But mm. the innovation is there and it could always lead to something interesting or useful. Who knows? This might be the first version of a real BB eight. Yeah, like yeah. Down yeah. the road. Again, like I said, a lot of technology that are coming out might not be what we need now, but they're gonna spark the fire for what's gonna happen yeah, in the future. Yeah, templates of the future. Exactly, and that's that's that's. I think, if anything, speaking to that, we can go right into the the concepts ideas because the biggest concept this year was Sony's car. Even though they're not gonna actually make the car, they just want to like, show the, their abilities to and all their facets of stuff that they do that can fit into a car. Yeah. Monitors, speakers, TVs, whatever yeah. you wanted. They Nobody were, saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. I think that was a sleeper because, honestly, it was it was a shock to see a car and that looked like in what most people, if you go online, you see the pictures, it definitely looks a lot better than any Tesla. It does. You know, it looks no, like something you looks, would definitely want to... It wanna, looks good. It looks good. Design the interior is designed very well. Interior like there's amazing. detailed and there's not just a simple screen in the middle and then everything is just blanked yeah, out. Old dash is a screen, but yeah. not like this big hulking screen like some other biting, biting yeah. electric car. But yeah, uh, yeah, they got sensors, radars, all this stuff. They they have a, a decent amount of specs with the car, though it's not coming out. Yeah. Like oh yeah, it goes zero to sixty in four point five seconds. But what, what I do give them this because they said they weren't really intentionally trying to show that they can make a car. They were trying to show that they have components that they can put in cars, and maybe push other manufacturers to be like, hey, if Sony can do this, yep. and they're a camera, TV, yep. electronics company, like basically, you how, should be able to like yeah. knock this out the park. You well, know? or if they, you know, people acting up. Holla at us from this for what we can do for you. Exactly. Yeah. So they did they, they definitely did what other companies should have done to show, hey, this is this is our capabilities. And it's something outside the box, but just know that we're here to Yes, yeah, just let you that. know we can do this. Yeah. Yeah. We have a ride. <laughs> exactly. So, so again, everybody always thought, Oh, you know, Sony is falling by the wayside when it comes to electronics. No. They they were just innovating. And it took them a little bit longer. Yeah, that's just off the top of the head. I'm pretty sure they. they I know, mean, their camera division has been that, selling the IMX sensors. One. They, they right. sell everybody, pretty much every Android phone has a Sony sensor. In and it. most of the camera sensors on today's modern DSLRs and mirrorless cameras come from Sony too. So they're not hurting. Yeah, they're not hurting exactly. So they're good. Yeah. Um, what was the car? Oh, the Mercedes Benz Avatar thing. I saw that. That looks. Interesting. It looks interesting, eh. but Mercedes always like we've gone to the auto shows. They've yeah. always had these high, futuristic. I want to call them demolition man concept. You know, if you ever seen the movie, Great movie. Um, like it's it's so out there. Like it's yeah, like that, the future. That future shit was out there. Yeah, it? like we're talking about when they start banning meat. That's that so when like you see those cars. Future Liberace there. cars. Yeah, know, yeah. Like I mean, they look cool. Um, this it's tireless. It has all these. Innovative things because that's yeah, something, something that's the future. If you if you haven't know, that's another thing that the that I mean I'm sure CES hasn't shown this, but in the last like five five years, com tire companies are trying to innovate to where like they don't need yeah. the bladders airless. anymore. They're yeah. airless. Uh, Michelin uh, Michelin has yeah, Michelin one that they're testing. Here. Actually, both of them they uh they're they testing. were there showing off uh, some of that stuff at CES yeah. as well. So they last longer, um, and they're airless. Yeah. Um, they won't pop if you hit a big pothole. They'll just or nail. Oh, nail! It just <laughs> continues Keep going. going. Um, and some of these, I don't know if it's Mission or one of the brands, actually helped design these tires like 15, 20 years ago for rovers on on uh, on Mars. 
because they couldn't get them to to land without popping, so yeah, they had to start they, designing they this. So now they're they're yeah. So now they're using that to for us and for they're gonna the first application is always gonna be military or experimental, oh, yeah. and then they're gonna pass like over to us yeah. like everything else. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool that that's that's where that's going. Perfect. I don't know how you got off that topic. Oh, cause of cars. Um, one plus concept one phone. So it's pretty much their latest. Uh, OnePlus 7 Pro McLaren 5G. I'm, I'm pretty sure I messed that up somewhere. 5G McLaren, one of the switch. It's pretty much that phone with like a leather kind of covering from, I wrote it, it's LG G4, something similar, papaya orange, as they call it. But the trick of it is that it has an electrochrom- electrochromatic uh, cover over the cameras, which is the same technology McLaren uses for their sunroof. So what it does is just you, you know, you, you turn it on and then the the glass goes from, you know, transparent to dark. Right. You can still see the camera and certain lights are not completely gone, but it's an interesting technology. And probably for some people who are in the cameras, the more interesting thing about it is that it actually doubles as a sort of ND filter. Yeah, that's what I was That's probably say. the most interesting thing. That yeah, is like the most interesting. All that Which is honestly what a lot of like built newer cameras have built in. Yeah. Like, and that's what that's, that's really what it is. Very important when you're yeah. outside. Like yeah. ND filters. Uh, if you don't, it's actually know. a variable one. Like you can yeah. tone. Variable would be great. Well, that's but uh, for those of you not unfamiliar, ND filters are pretty much sunglasses for your uh, lenses. camera lenses. Yeah. And then some have variables when they can adjust the. They can adjust, the, yeah. Because yeah. normally they come in like stops, like it two, just, four, yeah. six. So like, but with variable you can dial it into exactly where you need, and even if it's like a quarter stop more, a three eighths of a stop more, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So. so but how so, do you feel about those like those one off phones that? Because I know like I'm a big Star Wars fan, and Samsung released their. Oh, uh, like, it looked great. Snack. Uh, Would you spend that extra like five hundred bucks just for that edition? I wouldn't. I'm not a big Star Wars fan, and I didn't really. But no, I mean, just like in general, like for those collectors' editions that they release. I think it's tough because of the money they asking for. Yeah, and it's not like you knew it was coming. So yeah, and it's not like really adding any actual like technological advancements. Just color, they're just a paint color job and custom sound yeah, that yeah, you can download. Yeah, exactly. Nothing else exactly. really. Exactly. Yeah. You can kind of go to Colorware and do all that, and then you can download the. Or you can get it wrapped and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's cool, but then it's like if you already built a Note 10, it's like if you if you sell your phone, you're not gonna get enough money to do yeah. a swap. You have to put up more money. Even though there'd be a little bit, but I don't know. It's um, I think those things are niche. Um, yeah, people collect them, people buy them. I think uh, the concepts are cool, like the like this one plus one. It's interesting. I think again, this is also kind of them. This is a flex. This is just like, oh, we're not selling this. We're just showing you some of the things we got, we can do that they were able to take that technology that they have to in show the it roof right, and put right, that right. in the camera module. And um, the whole thing happens in 0.7 seconds. So that's pretty good, first gen. Hmm. Will, will we see it on other cameras? That's the thing. Um, or is it just because it's a McLaren and they're trying to make it I match with the car? They said they didn't say if they would. I don't, I'm not sure if they will or won't. Um, and they're doing something like I think this week or next week showing technology. Uh, they're probably just doing faster refresh rates, but we'll see um, what they're doing with their display. So, again, this is an interesting flex. Uh, we'll see if anything comes out of it. Uh, I feel like there's... No, oh, yeah, the Alienware. Alienware UFO concept. Yeah, that is like... So, in the, in the heyday, you know, Sega, Nintendo, Neo Geo, they were they were playing and batting to be like the baddest. Yeah, they all had mobile system. systems. Right. Not just mobile systems, just like the just graphics, yeah. like the, the games they were trying to market. I believe like in the, in, in the last 10 years... Nintendo's really fallen off on the kind of games that they're going after. Like, when you look at the trailers for the games at, like, the PS4 or the Xbox One S or X, whatever, whatever. the games that they were trying to, like, come out with the trailers to those games, you're like, oh, shit, this is, like, an epic, like, cinematic kind of universe that they're trying to create. Yeah. For example, like, a huge Star Wars fan, so this news, like, um, the new Star Wars game that just came out, just that trailer alone. Yeah. 
and then playing it, I was like, holy crap. Uh, well, you have it. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, it, I love it, but like, it, it, I love it because it's Star Wars, but I also love it because just the way it looks, like you, you feel like, holy, like this is this is intense. It definitely goes way back from the days when I first started playing my my Xbox Genesis, and then you had Ultra Beast, and then it only went like one way, and now you're like 360 with the lightsaber yeah. and everything. If you remember, yeah, you go from. Uh, Atari 2600 yeah and ColecoVision to so this look, look at but now. I, there, I've always said that you know there's a point where Nintendo kind of hasn't been playing innovator but just playing catching up but like everybody else is running and Nintendo's just walking with their hands in their pockets to follow yeah, the rest I swear they listened to that podcast we did <laughs> yeah, for, nah, so now like the yeah, Nintendo Switch it's, it's a nice device the Switch Lite it's cool it's portable there's some cool ass games they sell a lot they sell a lot of those because some of it's nostalgia, some of it's the portability of the games. You know, you have a screen, but this is like that on crack. Yeah. So. And it has a. It's like having an Xbox processor in your hand. Yeah. So it's pretty much a piece, uh, a switch, running PC games. It's capable enough to run PC. Right. Games. And that screen and the yeah. And so they don't have now. My colleagues uh, went to a demo because they did the demo in December before, you know, press pre-briefing. Um, I don't have any connection with Dell, so I didn't go. Or I was busy. So whatever the case, they went. They said it ran smooth. All of them, I talked to different colleagues. They all said it ran smooth. It was great. Got a little hot. But again, if you're running PC, so that's going to be And it's like issue. this thin. Like, it's super thin. Yeah, it's going to be hot. Yeah. Battery life probably going to be shit. Um, right, right, right. But concept. Concept. I don't. The thing is, it's supposed to be like concept, but it works. Like yeah. it wasn't like but a see, idea. idea. And then, I mean, you keep saying concept and betas and stuff like that. But from what I kept hearing was like, this was a concept, but there was like no flaws. Like you could have gone to market the next day. Like if they yeah. would have turned around and said, hey, these are going to hit the market yep. for the new year. Yeah, you would have been, been okay because you like, this works. It's, it's they there. They could have been like, yeah, we saw this for 999. Right. Battery life isn't great. It's Two to four hours, but, but here it is. Here it is. People will buy it. Yeah, no, no, no definitely, definitely. And yeah. and people will be like, oh, okay, that's what, don't worry. I have I have a charger. I have like a mm -hmm. ten thousand milliamp battery in my backpack. Yeah. We good. So they didn't, they didn't say anything about specs, just other than the eight inch display. Um, the the, the side controls come off like the switch. Um, and then you can make it into regular control. Yeah, they have a dock and all that. But uh, yeah. Running, well, I mean, good games. Man. And which is funny because for the. The previous year, the talk was that that uh, that Stevia, the, was that uh, the Google release? Was it Google? Who oh, released yeah. it? Like that was a talk. Oh yeah, it's gonna be amazing. They it dropped and everybody stopped talking about it because they realized it was crap. But here, this one, like everybody's talking about it and they wish it would come to market. And it's not. But it, it might not. Maybe it a might, version of it may eventually. I don't think they're gonna. I think I think they'll wait until they get that. If they could get that battery life good, I think they would. But yeah. I think they're waiting. They're like, nope, we're not we're not gonna play ourselves throughout a Gen One and everything's great, but this but one I, glaring I don't, important I don't part. think people would be upset if that was a one glaring thing. Like if you can give me I four agree. hours on a train playing my favorite games at full like graphic capacity and immersive like just enjoyment, yeah. People would be okay with that. Oh no, I agree a thousand percent. And I would. I mean I'm not, I'm not a big gamer outside of like the the house, but if I needed to be somewhere entertained, I'm sure that would be it. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Let's turn that just catch up here and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so while he looks, I'm gonna jump on to the next topic. Go for it. The Canon One DX Mark III, which is, for all intents and purposes, a very high end. It's always been a high end photography for sports and high end print photography, fashion photography. It's everybody knows it as a legendary camera. In the industry for photography, for high end stuff, it's always been expensive to reach. This one's no exception. It's I think sixty five hundred dollars for uh, the for body, body yes. alone. Yep. Um, we're not even talking about that. This is using the newest CF Express cards, which one they're very rare because everybody's trying to get all the new cameras that are coming out are literally coming out with this media in mind. Um, which is good for those people who have CFC fast card cameras because that media is going to start dropping really fast. Yeah. Because this media for this camera is almost twice, in some cases, maybe three times the speed of the C fast card. Um, which is 
it needs to for the stuff it's going to be um, trying to capture at the speed with this it's higher resolution. Expensive. So it's going to, yeah, so the, the memory alone is going to be expensive. I think for like a 500, you're looking at like six or $700. Um, and mind you, like because of the bigger size files, that's not going to, to give you as much as it did before. Yeah, like SD is out. There's SD no is SD out. Yeah, like there there's all. no SD slot. It's all CF Express dual slotted though. So, um, but again, um, still have the same body form factor. The internals for photography are off the chart. Like I'm, like I don't think there's. Like, I know everybody says, oh, well, Sony has the same thing. They do, but then at these specs and at these speeds. I'm sure the next iteration of the A9 is going to have CFast or whatever they want to do with it, which is fine, but right now they don't. Yeah, I, don't, I think I think everybody passed on the A9 because it's yeah. like, I could just get the A3 and be good. It'd be good. Because it just, it wasn't, there wasn't that much bigger of a jump. This one might, is a, a jump price, yeah. Yeah. But this one is definitely a bigger jump from oh, yeah. the previous. The 4K is 5.5K raw. Yeah. Um, but again, because it's so huge in files, like that media is going to go up quick. So you're going to need more than just a couple cards. Um, it does, uh, you know, log, it does uh, higher frame rates. But honestly, it's a great camera. And if you're going to do photography and video on the side and you have the funds for it, I'd say get it. But repeat but, what you said. Photography and video on the side. On the this side. Isn't a, this isn't a one-off. Uh, this is not a one-off. One, because of the pricing. Um, and right now the workflow to take this camera and make it workable is like almost seems like the workflow for the one DC, which if you remember the one DC was a beautiful camera, it was 24 P, um, not really the 4k 24 P the files were huge. They gave you the best image you could possibly imagine, but the workflow, even by today's standard, you can still buy that camera for two grand. So it's kept some of its value. But the workflow is still enormously taxing. And that's going to be like, honestly, if you're going to be doing more video than photography, that's not going to be C200. Easy. Yeah. Easy. That's the way, that's the easy, easy go right there. C200. Bam, that's it. Do that. That workflow is, is better. The, the 4K, the, uh, the RAW is a light. Um, unlike the RAW that's going to be in the 1DX Mark III. That's not a light raw. That's a straight raw raw. Like that, there's no light to it. That is a big fat boy right there. So again, you know, take it with the grain of salt. But like, if your main priority is gonna be video, um, if you have the funds and you shitting money like that, get it, get it by all means. Make that the A camera or the B camera. If you're seriously though about cinematography, and you're looking at it. If you want to do video, video, get the C200. This, and then later on in the road, it's, the C200 is going to be cheaper in the long end, um, just for the batteries and the media alone. You might, it might, you know, round out less. Especially if now you probably get a used one, um, or you might be able to get like a newer one for a lower price. Honestly, because it's been on the market for a while. Okay. Now, if you want the biggest, the baddest photography sports camera, high end that can do some badass video, you know, get the Don't get the Mark that. III. Get it. Go for it. Again. I'm sure there's less expensive options, but the good thing is if you do get this camera, be sure that you're future proofing for the next 10 years. Not only when it comes to photography and video, when it comes to the media, because this media is here to stay for a nice minute. Like it's going to be here for a while. Cause like CFAST was here for like almost seven years. This might be as long, maybe not as long, maybe six years. I, I feel like it's going to be a, a new iteration, maybe sooner than later, but yeah, it's going to be a, definitely an intense camera. Definitely one I'm going to rent to check out and see exactly what I can do. Yeah. Well, speaking of storage, uh, Samsung dropped the right. T7 Touch. T7. Well, T7 and T7 Touch. Right, right, right. They focus more on the T7. And again, the the speeds on this T7, it's almost comparable to the speeds on a CF Express cards, the, the one, Nuts. which is ridiculous. And I am actually excited to get one of these because I have a Black Magic. And originally, when the Black Magic Pocket 4K came out, the 4K 60P, you can even with the fastest FS, uh, CFast cards or the fastest like um, T5, you can only record for a certain amount of time before there's like a buffering issue because going to the card or going to the drive, it was just, it wasn't fast enough. Yeah, this might be mitigated by the T7 series. 
Um, so when it comes out, I'm definitely going to, I mean, the, and the price is not that far off. Mm, the right. price is almost like, almost the same, almost the same as when the T5 came out. So it's not like they're trying to rob you. They're, mm. they're, they're giving you a good value. They're giving you the same pricing for something that's three, almost three times faster than yeah, you're getting uh, about, about a thousand, not about, you're getting like 1050 reads to thousand writes yeah. megabits per second speeds, speeds. So I'm excited. I want to test it to see if it can actually do a continuous to 4K 60 raw. Just, you know, crazy. Yeah. Oh, and then we forgot to mention the most important thing. Not the most important, but the more interesting thing. They call it a touch because it has a fingerprint sensor on the SSD itself. So there will be a, a regular model that will come out a bit later. They're pushing the touch now. That starts at 130 for the 500 gig and goes up to $400 for the two terabyte. Now, what's what's the what's the benefit of the touch besides the, the security? So nobody it's just security. Security. It's just now, additional security. Instead of if you want to type in the keyboard, you just boop. If the touch fails, does it lock you out of the drive? No, you still have the, the keyboard, uh, the the key in option when you plug it into. Oh, okay, um, okay. But um, you wouldn't be able to like that. Say like if you were to use it for like a. Uh, Black Magic 6K or 4K. I don't know if the touch would apply to that. I think the touch would apply when you're trying to read the data. Yeah. Now okay. Yeah. That's what's up. All right. Yeah, because it's like yeah, you can't key in nothing. Yeah, so, you can't key yeah, in nothing in there. Be like trying to pull it to edit and all that stuff. All right. To dump or to share. All That's right. Well, I'm excited either way to, to try it out and <laughs> I don't see. Care, I want it. You see, um, yeah, for real. So if Sans wants to send us some more away. Of, right there. Well, we we were trying to get this live stream going and. We're zero and two. Fans. We're zero and two. We're not gonna tell you exactly what the we'll, brand. Yeah, we'll they sent back. us a brand to test. We're gonna try one more time. We're gonna try one more time, but let's just say this hasn't been good. It hasn't been good. It's it's very proprietary in the way you have to set it up. Very proprietary in the applications you have to use. Very yeah. proprietary in the third party devices you have to connect it to. Um, it's supposed to open you up to live stream. But it's very hindering kind of because you can only do it in a certain way. Yeah. But so and live stream is meant to be sure you can do it anyway. Yeah. Basically. Especially in today's live stream, where you can do it through an app or through your computer, or through your phone, or directly through your cameras. Yeah. Um, which leads into the next thing that we're talking about. The Mevo start. So right. Mevo does a lot of live stream. They're pretty much a camera, a uh, small a smaller camera. Integrated system. Yeah. So you can put that it, um uh, you know, you can do everything from there with the app. So this new guy is a newer camera. It's a uh, design redesigned different. Um, you could do as a HDR sensor, you can do, you know, 10 AP streaming as some audio, its own audio processing. And then it has its own 3.5 millimeter jack in case you're like, no, 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 I want, I want to use my own audio. Yeah. You know, road, one of those road mics or something or lav mic or something. And then you can set that up from there for our battery life. So, I doubt anybody's live streaming past that unless it's like a charity An event. Yeah, long, yeah, long exactly. gaming event. And then you can just, you know, use the app and you can go live stream on everything that live streams, even Periscope, which is apparently still around. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is due out in April for 300 bucks. Uh, hopefully, I think they will are on the list to get one, so. Which is way cheaper than the thing that we failed at twice. And again, I don't know if it's us because we've followed everything to the T. We've, we've we'll, done it we'll before. Get back to that. We'll get, we'll back, get back to, to that. that thing. We'll let you know. Make sure it's not us. We'll, we'll reply to when the video is up, and you'll know which video is because we're going to start it. Okay, this is take three. This is see if it works. Uh, Unless we're going to start the video. Speaking of uh, affordable tech, we had the J Lab Audio Go Air earbuds, $30 earbuds. Um, I heard of J Lab Audio. I've heard some good things about them. So I don't know what their earbuds sound like. So I'm curious to see what they're there. Hopefully they send us send us. But some. even if they're okay, they're even if they're decent to okay for thirty bucks to have a pair yeah. of it's earpods. Like fight, fight the CEO like fight me, bro. Yeah, bucks. with wire, <laughs> it has wireless charging, right? Uh, this is before everything, so I got to see the the, the charging right. case. Uh, it doesn't have wire. like the, does the case support wireless yeah. charging? It doesn't look like it does. Okay, but you do get rapid charging. You can um, yeah. I mean, if that's the case for thirty bucks, yeah, five hour battery life. Um, you can charge them up to three times. Um, built in mics. Uh, eight, uh, you know, thirty foot range. You got three different sound profiles. 
touch controls, hmm. uh, virtual assistant support. You get a lot for thirty bucks. Yeah, no, for thirty bucks, that is a lot. I just want to know what the sound quality sounds like. Yeah, because if, if it's even good to decent or even like yeah. good to great or out there yeah. above average for I'm, thirty bucks, that's not. I'm just curious. That's so. not bad. Yeah, the CEO actually retweeted. He, he retweeted and commented on uh, the post about it. I'm like, uh, that means I'm like seven. <laughs> I'll probably pick them up, uh, thirty bucks. Yeah, for real. They, they look good. Um, they really look good. Thirty bucks because everybody's trying to, not everybody, but we're at we're at um, everybody's trying to out AirPod the AirPod or at least throw their hat in rings. Like, yo, we got one too. You got one too, which is fine because that, you know, that'll help with uh, competition, stifle competition, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um. One of the big things. Yeah. Okay. So Google Assistant. Uh, Google had a nice little uh, thing there. Where they had like slides and stuff. And, uh, nice little fun house kind of thing showing us stuff. So the added of, you know, Google Assistant always getting cooler and better. So now they added scheduled actions. So you can be like, okay. Yeah, like a doctor's appointment or something? Turn on my AC. If you have a smart plug or if you have a smart AC, turn it on at boom, 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 six o'clock. And it'll do it. Okay. Do it with the lights. You got a RoboVac or Roomba or something. You know, boom, remind me or I'll probably forget because I got a lot going on. But at Saturday at noon, turn that vacuum on. And it'll just, you know, boom. If you got one that self parks and self charges itself, you're good to go. So it does that. Uh, you know, interpreter mode is coming to different things and more uh, businesses and stuff, which is cool. Um, which is also beneficial. You know, people out of town or different countries stuff, you know, communication is always important. And, you know, you don't want to, you know, you, just, you mess up one word and, you know, you, yeah. you messed up the wrong answer. Um, now it can read web pages. It can change the speed of it. It can read it to you. It's interesting. That's interesting. Just, yeah. That's kind of a flex. Like, just look what we can do. You may not use it, but we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then a bunch of other stuff. So this this this, this Google just saying we 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 forget it. we still building on Google Assistant, still making it better than any of you all. <laughs> they're trying to do something different, or they're trying to get it right from where everybody I else mean, has failed. They, the, the amount of things you you forget, the amount of things you can do with it. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think now <laughs> between just between your phone and like Google Home and smart speakers and all that. Yeah. I think you you would have like the like Alexa too. Like I'm not yeah. I'm not, I'm not trash on Alexa. I'm just just Google household. Just 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 cause no real reason. We'll see. Hopefully they get it. Hopefully it yeah. works. Um. Oh, you want to talk about filmmaker mode? Filmmaker mode. Yes. So there's two brands of TV. I think it's Samsung and Philips. Philips. Yep. So. If you haven't heard, uh, a lot of the big time Hollywood studios and directors have been bitching, rightly so, that TVs nowadays they come set, you know, it's like you have the 20, 120 hertz, 240 hertz for fresh rate, which looks good on for video and everything else that broadcasts it. Doesn't look good for film because it makes film speed up a little bit. So it makes it look almost like video quality. Um, the thing is, that for the longest time, this was always set as standard. Like it came turned on, you had to turn it off in order for it to work. Uh, which is, I've been on, a, I've used a lot of TVs. I've gone through a lot of menus. The menus on TVs are not intuitive. They're terrible. They're they, LG, they dig. LG's good, but everybody yeah. Else is terrible. But everybody else, like you, you have to dig through like thirty layers of shit before you find the button that you need to switch off for everything to work right. So now there's been an initiative push from Hollywood. And again, a lot of filmmakers and studios to change that. So the filmmakers mode is like now the TVs are going to come preset so you can watch and entertain movies. Um, and the, the settings are going to be set up. So if you do not want it in filmmakers mode and you do like that soap opera video effect because you've gotten used to it, and some people do, yeah, yeah. Um, it'll be a lot easier to just go into your settings and turn it off and on than before. Um, and this uh, for a lot of per, a lot of film people is a big win because a lot of and again it's only two but the word is everybody else is gonna do it eventually. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's a start. They're gonna have it set to filmmaker mode, so you know you can get the most cinematic viewing 
from your TVs, which again, the start and you know, you'll, you'll watch it as it was intended, not as it was refreshed to be seen. So that's, that's a good thing. It's a plus. And last but not least, we have folding phones. Now we have folding PCs coming this year. Yeah. So. Um, like I said, a folding, everybody thinks folding is the future, and it might very well be the future. Um, but uh, I, I don't think we're there yet. I think it's unlike every other technology that we had, in order for a folding device to replace this device, the folding device would have to be as thin as this device, which would mean that the technology would have to make this device even thinner. And I don't know if that exists yet. And as we've seen from devices this year that we were folding, even Samsung's attempt at the folding, uh, the Samsung Fold, those devices leave a lot of potential for damaging yeah. and error. And that's that's definitely not a good thing. Especially um, not. You're basically, like, don't. It's like general rule of thumb, don't ever buy ge- generation one of tech. Right. Um, and so applies here heavily, especially because you're going to charge, get yeah. charged more for it. And then right now, there's no really way to cut that on the the hinge. Like, you're always going to have a teardrop kind of look at the very end of yeah. it. Yeah, yep. Um, so, and then that teardrop thing, it's also going to be the most fragile part of the phone. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's cool, and in theory, the, the thing I do like about the, 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 the TV or the laptops, the foldable laptops slash iPads or pads or whatever, or whatever they call them, yeah, yeah. is that they're not intended to close completely anyways. They're intended to be stored like this. Yeah. Um, and you can bend it, and it turns into like a keyboard slash TV or slash, you know, divider. Or like, this is the top, this is the bottom. Which in that regard, yes, that might be dope tech. Um, you know, if you throw a wireless mouse or even a wireless keyboard or even a pen on there. Yeah. you be looking at some dope stuff yeah. um, in that regards. But for the ones that are intended to completely fold, that might not be yet here. Well, we'll see because... Um they dropped a f- there were a few different companies that had uh, foldable PCs, but one is only one is coming to market, and that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold. That I guess his name. So <laughs> that'll actually be coming to market. Um, OLED screen. Not sure what. Um, you know, maybe like 13 inches. Uh, ooh, and but and then you go back to a point blocks. you just said. The reason the gas will cost that much is because the only Panels that can fold are OLEDs. Yeah. So for the next for few foreseeable future, for long they're the gonna be lasts. expensive because of the fact that they can only use one panel, and it has to be OLED because that's the only one that can actually bend without breaking. So and then there comes the cost price. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited about that. That's definitely a cool thing as long as you don't fold it completely because we're not there yet. We'll see. I mean, again, it's like a use case thing. It's like, yeah, no, 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 no. The cool is useful. Exactly. Because after the coolness wears, well, you know, for those who bought it, once the coolness wears off, they're either stuck with it or they gotta return it. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's all I got on CES. Unless you got something else you wanna touch on. Well, so the thing I did. I've been kind of following, and I don't know why, but it's maybe because I do video and broadcast and stuff like that. ATSC 3.0. So that is basically the antenna signals of the future. Um, The reason this is going to change is because it's going to allow for... Because if you don't know, the majority of the Americans still use antennas. Yep. Because they live in places where there's mountains and I don't care what Verizon tells you on their uh, site so you can buy more stock. They don't cover the middle part of the portion of the country because there's way too many valleys, mountains, and open spaces. In regards to antenna technology is what a lot of people depend on. The, the interesting part about this is going to allow for things to go further to without less interruption for mountains and things. But more importantly, this is going to be actually fed information. Like they're able to send weather updates, um, traffic alerts through these signals. So you, not, not only... So this does away, like, if you do live in a remote part of the world or the country, you don't have to worry about you need to be on the cable or DSL because you'll still receive, hey, there's a storm coming. Hey, you know, watch out. Uh, this is closed because of an emergency. Or there's a fire or a tornado hit. Like, you'll be getting that 
on your TV along with updates, weather updates, traffic updates. They're able to send information without needing Wi-Fi, without needing internet, just through this new signal that they develop, which that's, is pretty cool because I can dope. see that. Yeah, and it dope. is. The, and there's companies that are trying to implement it onto... They already have a chipset that you can put onto mobile devices if you wanted to. Chipset so you can put it into cars if you wanted to. Mm. So, that means you can buy a headrest that has an A... TSC three chips and antenna you attach it to your car and you can drive down the road and, catch and get catch channel, free TV you know, channel through the two to whatever yeah you know. at, at local with updates and stuff like that which honestly that technology is more fascinating because of the potential that it has for me than useful. a lot of other things uh, useful, useful. Yeah, and, it, and then you can cool expand shit. to yeah. it, it's useful and you can expand to other things then remember again. A lot of things that came out here might not seem cool right now, but they are a platform for the shit that the Jetsons were showing us when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that's it. That's, that's that all was, I got. That was our, our wrap up, our take on CS 2020. That's right. Uh, we'll be there next year. We were not there. We will be there next year, though. We're making plans. Not going to work. Okay. There you go. All right. So next time. Sponsors, all of us. All right. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know when else we'll do. We'll we'll, we'll let you know when next time we'll have okay. another. Thing we got to, we got to test out the thing yeah, that's failed twice. So. so we got to do that soon before they ask for it back. So, yeah. <laughs> um, which I gladly would give them back to them because it yeah. has not. So succeeded. that's uh, our recap. That's our show for today. Till uh, next time. Thanks for watching. Could be anywhere in the world you're here with us. We appreciate you for doing so, and see you in the next podcast show video something later. Peace.